Hi, I'm Julian Grimm and I have a sugar addiction. And by sugar, I mean you. And by addiction, I mean addiction. Today, it's just a quick video because I've been working all night in a music video for my wife. Okay, this is how you get slow motion in music videos. You accelerate the song and you make your singer go crazy. I don't know what you saw, but... And yes, I don't only do music production, I also do video production and music videos in general. So if you guys want to know more about music videos and how to make them, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll make some videos about video making, okay? Cool. Today I'm going to show you the new Antelope Audio Control Panel that comes with the interfaces they sell. It's new, they redesigned it, it looks awesome. And I'm also going to show you their two newest plugins. They are two EQs and they're very fun. So come with me, it's going to be a quick video, but I'm here, I'm kind of awake and we can do this together guys. So there are so many cool things about the new Antelope Audio Control Panel. This is for the Orion Studio, as you can see up here, Synergy Core. That's the interface that I own. You can still resize it, which is awesome, but it looks much better now when you resize things. You see everything looks huge and beautiful and colorful. You have all these nice colors and simpler blocks here. You can see the numbers easier. You can still relabel your inputs and everything so you can see them here as well. And what's cool now is you can hide some of these lanes to make your routing matrix a little bit more simple. So for example, if you're not messing around with emulation mics, you can just hide the emulation mic lane right there. As you can see, I hit all my mixer lanes because I'm not using them right now. So that makes my routing matrix much cleaner as you can see right there. Also, New section up here, you see the preamps look much better now, redesigned. You have a safety feature here, you have to command or control click the 48 volts button to turn it on, which is nice to make everything safe if you have ribbon mics and stuff like that. You still have all the usual tabs right here. The effects tab now, I think this is really cool. It opens in a new window, so you can have your effects tab and your meters here, for example, if you're putting a bunch of effects. You see, this is my effect chain for the vocals I'm recording right now. I can still see how loud they're coming in right here and mess around with them at the same time. As you can see as well, if I squeeze this over here and I open my mixer here, for example, I can right click my routing tab and it'll open in a new window and I can have both at the same time, routing and seeing where is it going in the mixer and all that stuff, which is really cool. Uh, what else do we have here? We have separate section for monitors and headphones and, and talkback, which is cool, is more organized. We have a better session management tab right here as well you have an admin tab where you can go to your manuals you can see the version of your control panel tech support everything's there in your mixer as well now you have the aura verb looking much better it's just a much cleaner much nicer looking interface in general and i like it to be really big in my screen because i'm kind of blind okay so yes yeah, so the control panel looks really cool but we're here for plugins right because that's what we like we like plugins we like new stuff to mess around with so i have this simple drum and bass mix if you thought i was talking about drum and bass the electronic music style no i'm literally talking about drum and bass punk rock drum and bass this is how it sounds So as you can see, the bass can use some work. The drums are kind of boxy still. So you know what? I'm gonna start with the bass. This is how the bass sounds on its own. Sounds quite cool, right? But it can be enhanced. It can have a little bit more low end and a little bit more attack as well. And EQ is exactly what it needs. So let's drag the FX to DAW mono from Antelope Audio because this is a bass signal. It's a mono signal. It's right in the center of your mix. Let's just drag it there opens this little window right here. You can access all your Antelope Audio plugins right here. So I wanna show you the EQ, but let's let's make this bass sound as best as it can. Let's first stick a compressor in there. And for bass, I like this one right here, FETA78. You can probably recognize this style of compressor. And it is my favorite compressor on bass because I used to have a real one where I used to work in a studio. I used to compress on the way in through this compressor and it always made my basses sound better. So I'm gonna put this one right here and it's probably already compressing a bit because this bass is quite loud. Let's see. Yeah, just a bit of compression right there. Nothing too crazy. I know sometimes I say that and you're looking at the numbers saying, but this is crazy compression. But this is punk rock, man. You have to be a little bit crazy. When I say nothing too crazy, it's nothing too crazy to punk rock, okay? If you're maybe mixing jazz, this might look crazy. 
but this is not jazz. This is punk rock, okay? So let's move on to our new boy right here, the Filtech MK3. See, really simple EQ. It has a filter on both sides and it has three bands, which is mostly what I need when I'm mixing punk rock. I like to mix most instruments with three bands and then I save the EQs with more bands for the buses. And as you can see, they have this little button here, which means off in the middle and then a narrow curve to the left and a wide curve to the right. The wide curve is gonna affect the sound more gently and it's gonna affect frequencies around where you choose to put your EQ frequency on. The narrow curve is gonna focus mostly on the frequency you set it to. So both useful. This is why this EQ is so cool because it can be quite gentle and it can also be very precise. So this is quite a cute EQ, especially for the time the real version was made, it was quite modern. So uh, let's start with the low end because this is bass, right? So with bass, I usually enhance around 80 for punk rock. I'm gonna put the EQ towards the wide side because I want it to be more gentle and to boost frequencies around 80, not just 80. So as you can see, whenever you turn on, the default on this EQ is pushing to plus 16 dBs. Now that's a lot of EQing. We don't need all of that, but it sounded quite cool to be honest. Like if you want a distorted, colorful EQ sound. It's definitely a sweet sound. It's not a bad sound. It's, it doesn't sound like an EQ suffering. It sounds like cool low end, but we don't need all that. So let's just put it all the way down and let's raise it slowly. I would say around plus six, it's what I need right now. I might I might put it back to plus four later on, but right now I'm feeling the low end and I'm like, mmm, babes, yeah, touch me. And I'm, I'm leaving at plus six right now. In the middle, I always like to cut a little bit because bass can have a lot annoying frequencies around 600. So let me just set our EQ to 600. And because it's to plus 16, when I turn on this thing, you're gonna hear how annoying it sounds. That's something I want to get rid of a little bit. So I'm going to put the narrow curve because I want just 600 to be affected. And I'm going to turn it down maybe minus four. Let's see. Actually, let's leave it at minus two because this bass is not that wonky. So I think minus two is enough. We don't want to get rid of all of that because then it kind of sounds empty in the mid range. So uh, let's leave it at minus two. And for the last band, again, I'm going to leave it wide this time and I'm going to put it around 8K. That's usually where I boost the bass to get a little bit of that pick sound for punk rock, but I might change this. So let's just hear it. Let's see how it goes. You see, at plus 16, this still sounds quite good. It sounds quite picky and I like it. I might leave it like this. Let me, let me just listen to it for a second longer. Let's put it down to plus 12 just to be conservative, but I like how it sounds. The wide curve makes everything sound much sweeter and it's, it's awesome. So that's the bass sound right now. I also want to add a preamp to give a little bit more harmonics in there, a bit more of a analogy sound. And I really like this preamp for bass. So we have this right here. So we're clipping everywhere. So let's just turn these volumes down a little bit. Let's hear the bass again without and with the plugging chain. Well, that sounds cool. I'm not sure it's gonna work in the mix with the drums, but that sounds cool. Let's put the drums in there and see how it sounds.
Yeah, I like how that sounds. But again, these drums need some work because they sound kind of boxy right now. So I'm gonna drag the AFX to DAW stereo plugin in there and we're gonna add some stuff to it, including the other new EQ, which is the most interesting one. But let's start first of all with the preamp this time. And I'm gonna put the 1073 preamp this time for the drums. As you can hear, it already adds a little bit of harmonics. So let's go to the new weird EQ. And it's this one right here, Audio Baton. I have never heard of this EQ before in my life till today, but look how cool it looks. It's very colorful. It has a lot more bands than the other EQ, which I like for a bus. This is the drum bus, so this is pretty cool. The only thing that we can do is mess around with it because I've never, I've never tried this EQ before. So let me first bypass it because there's something that I noticed that it's quite cool already. This EQ is quite colorful. Just by turning the EQ on, it already changes the sound of the drums. It's crazy, but it already cleaned up a little bit. It got rid of some of the boxiness and it also kind of enhanced the highs somehow. I'm not sure what's doing if the original one did this as well, but it's quite cool that just by adding this EQ, you already get something. Maybe it's not the best EQ for everything, but it is quite cool to try it on on different sounds and see what happens. But let's play around with the knobs and see how we can enhance this drum sound further. See, the low end sounds so good on this EQ. I pushed it so far and it still sounded good. It's very, very, very musical. I love this kind of EQ because I like to push my frequencies quite hard. I like to be quite heavy handed when it comes to EQ and I love when an EQ can handle my heavy hands. So let's keep going. So as you can hear, the top end on this EQ is quite sweet. I pushed it quite hard around the 10K range. I cleaned up a little bit of the mid range right there and I pushed the low end a little bit as well below the bass range. So right here at 40, that's where I want like that sub from the kick hitting, but uh, the bass is right here at 80, so I didn't mess around with that range too much. Let's just hear without and with the EQ. This EQ is great for generating hype, I think. The high end is much more shimmery. There's loads of hype on these drums now and they cut much better from under the bass. It's, it's really cool. Now, the only thing these drums are missing now is a bit of compression so we can add the famous 4K bus right here and just add some compression to these drums and I think they, they should be all right for the moment. So the full name for this EQ is Blonder Tongue Audio Baton or Audio Baton. I don't know. For this one, you're really gonna have to experiment where to put it in your mix. It can change the sound quite a lot. And let's just hear the bass and the drums together with and without the plugins. So 
as you can hear it added so much balls to the sound man i really like it i really like it and it's really cool when you have the interfaces from Mentalop audio that you can use these plugins and it doesn't take anything out of your cpu because it's taking all of the processing power from the dsp in the interface so that's pretty cool and yeah that's it for today's video guys i hope you like these kind of uh, plugin review videos i'm gonna do some more of these soon but i really need your help to tell me which plugins you want me to look at next i was thinking about doing a full mix with antelope audio plugins a full mix with steven slate plugins or a full mix with fab filter plugins just leave a comment below and tell me if you rather me use antelope audio steven slate or fab filter plugins on a whole mix nothing else but one brand on the whole mix and let's see how that sounds so thank you so much for watching if you like what i do please press all the buttons around me that help me and i see you guys next time Bye.